the tiny metro I got next to the save files just mean that you finish the game on that file. Uh, which opens up a couple of doors, uh, letting you go back to the main part of the game after finishing, because a few doors lock during the uh, final sequence. That shouldn't mean anything for a speedrun, but it doesn't affect anything. Yeah, it, especially in any percent. Like, maybe in 100% it would affect something, but... Yeah. For America, though, it still doesn't even affect anything in there, does it? Where? 100%. It... I mean, not in the current route, but it could potentially. Like, we, we get every item before we do the final part with Adam anyway. That's what I was thinking. It turns out that, like, theoretically, we could talk to Adam and then, then go do stuff, but... Yeah, if you forgot an item, you might be in trouble, but otherwise... Yeah. Which I think at that point, if you forgot an item, your run is probably dead anyway, but... Oh, that, that depends on what level you're running, but yeah. True. It really would be. Okay, so obviously the runners have started, and this is the first enemy of the game you see, which is a simple Hornode. Pretty easy to kill. It's actually can be pretty infamous for messing up the kill in a lot of Fusion Speed Runners. If you mess up either the Climb, which is the first series of wall jumps you saw, or the Hornode kill, it's not uncommon to see a runner reset. You generally don't want to have those messed up in your PB. Uh, the start, starting wall jumps is also really hard, actually. It's one of the harder harder rooms in the game for a speedrun. There's just a lot of R&D uh, in the start segment of, of the game, in the first, like, three minutes. Three to five minutes of the game has, have a, has a lot of R&D. Um, and it's, it tends to be a lot of early game resets to get something going. Yeah, and um, funnily enough, you, <laughs> a little small fun fact here, um, a lot of times if you watch runners, you'll notice that the longer they play the game, there seems to be somewhat of a trend towards the late game being worse off than the early game for runners. I think part of that reason is probably because how often you reset in the early game, you get a ton of practice on it. So now all of our runners are heading to the first elevator, if not already on it, and they will be from there going to get the missile exp the missile upgrade. Missile. It's sort of interesting in Fusion that the few of the early items you get kind of out of the standard order, where normally you might get more fall first, you actually get missiles first, and you end up getting bombs after the first sector. So you still have to wait for you to ball before you can get the bomb upgrade, which is usually one of the first three upgrades you'll get. There's already a fair bit of transparency between the runners. Uh, uh, even though the start of the game is usually really consistent. See the, the skill gap already shown? Yeah, even like I said, we saw Exodo and Buzzy, Fozzy were fairly close to each other. You know, they're not racing each other technically, but they are fairly close to each other, and I believe they're similar PBs, so that would line up with that. And obviously, Eagle, as I said before, he's pretty noticeably ahead of everyone else at the moment, and that again lines up with his current skill level. And I think it happened though. There, this game is very volatile, like, especially later on. Mm-hmm. The later segments where like a lot of the RNG gets cut down because you can one shot eye doors and all of that and the bosses come a bit more you don't have a boss like Zazabi where you basically it's basically complete RNG. It sort of gives a lot more room to optimization because you're not gonna be having as much thing get in your way. So right now Eagle is gonna try to get a uh, double on the eye door, that was awesome miss. You can try to get two missiles to hit on the same frame. And there you got a second. Um, and it seems like Axel got it. This skips uh, a face. You need to hit the door three times usually, but if you 
and then it hits two missiles on the same frame, it counts as two hits, and you skip waiting one opening. It's really useful. And also, you're actually going to see that same technique used on the um, boss fight here. Whenever you defeat the bosses, they usually enter a Corex form, which you need to shoot them with missiles, and you'll commonly see runners will actually try to do a similar, will do a different double missile setup, but with the same intent to hit an enemy with two missiles on the same frame. Generally, at least in the early game, hitting the four X's is probably easier than getting doubles on eye doors, since... It is way easier. Yeah. Because you can basically shoot two missiles straight up, and the Corex will run into them, generally. But... It still saves a pretty noticeable amount of time, and... Oh, that does not look good for Cooper. It looks like he... RNG... Yeah, RNG was not too favorable to him, so he ran out of missiles, I believe. I also noticed you were uh, picking up the second E-Pack before the boss, uh, which is a safety thing. You can, you can, there are a lot of potential E-Packs you can grab if you feel sort of unsure about surviving, which is pretty reasonable. Everything, especially later on, does a lot of damage, and having more health is useful. But grabbing the, that extra E-Pack before a Arachnus actually costs you a few missiles, and in my opinion, just makes the boss harder to quick kill because you have less ammo. Yeah, that's probably part of the reason that he had the ammo issue there at the end was yeah. because he had wasted those missiles, or wasted a missile at least trying to get that extra energy tank. I would say it's fairly quick to get, but the missile can moss can really make the Arachnus fight difficult. Looks like at the moment, actually, um, you can sort of see that Fozzie isn't too far behind Eagle, but there's still what appears to be like a five to seven second gap between the two, if not longer. Okay. Nine, ten seconds? Me out somewhere on that. Yeah, I, I immediately regretted saying five or seven seconds. <laughs> I was, like, I was I, like, I didn't have the elevator speeds in my head very well. I very consciously waited for the elevator to finish that <laughs> reference point. I sh yeah, it was like, when I that, I'm like, I should wait for the elevator to stop, because it's clearly longer than that. Yeah, it's so, uh, now all of our runners are entering Sector 1, which is the first of the six sectors you'll commonly be visiting in this game. And, um... Right off the bat in Sector 1, it's fairly straightforward for the most part, and, and then the first major thing you really have to worry about are the stabilizers. They basically act as the main, as sort of a... I don't want to use the term boss, but in a way they kind of are like e super easy bosses that you have to fight for a bump. And each one takes three missiles to kill, and usually they increase their difficulty by changing the room layout and forcing you to get to them, or get to a specific spot to damage them. And it can... and you have to be very careful in this sector too, because... Infusion, and I believe Zero Mission works the same way, the way drops work is that the more health you have, the, the more missile drops you get, and vice versa. And if you have full health, you only get missile drops, and if you have full missiles, you only get health drops, and I believe it's random if you have full of both, because at that point you can't really get any more supplies. It's actually only affected if you're full on anything. Uh, it doesn't adjust uh, otherwise, but if you're full on health, you're guaranteed missile drops. Okay, I wasn't sure. I, I assumed that it worked with missiles, but I wasn't really sure. Yeah, it works the same way, like if you're full on missiles, you get the health drops, assuming you do damage. Okay. And so, obviously, there's a very real risk of running out of missiles in this sector, especially given that you only usually have 20 missiles here, so the runners don't want to lose health. If you don't lose health, you're pretty much you're going to be okay, but if you do lose health, you can get in trouble really fast, depending on how much health you lose and how the RNG, how RNG goes for you. Uh, I think I saw, like, it's it's hard to keep track of all the teams, uh, but I think I saw everyone picking up the uh, extra missile tank on the way to Sector 1, which puts just uh, 25 missiles here. 
optimally you would only have 20, but it's it's uh, like, like Nexton said, it's it's sort of scary. You might run out of missiles, so picking up an extra tank is not unreasonable. And it only wastes a couple of seconds. Yeah, I did. I wasn't sure if any of them had went and gotten the main deck missile, so I didn't want to. Yeah, I, I noticed. Definitely that eagle did, but I'm not sure about everyone. Okay, it looks like it looks like Exodo did not. So oh, okay. he got the red axe into the room, and as soon as he spent a missile, his counter went down to one in the first digit. So, from what I can see, that's that makes sense. Uh, I cores we also do want to do double song. Uh, double missiles, it's, they're really awkward to do, though. their hitboxes are uh, just the eye thing that shoots the beam. Uh, and it's really hard to get, the, you need to like overlap the missiles in order to hit, um, get them to hit twice. And the hitboxes are janky in general, like missiles just go through them sometimes and tank for no reason. We have a setup for the chart beam to get it sort of consistently. It gets, a bit harder on the later ones. Still possible yeah. on almost everyone except for Wavy. Yeah, I didn't see if anyone did this setup. There's like primarily two setups that are used to get charge beam doubles. The easiest one is getting it stuck below the platform and just like jumping up and down trying to land two missiles into it. But there's another setup where you basically do it the same way you do eye door doubles. Which is a bit more difficult, and I haven't seen. Which I believe is it's a bit more difficult, and I haven't seen as many people do. But the whole setting it, getting it stuck below the platform setup, so easy that for a lot of people don't want to invest time in learning the other setup. But I do believe the other one is technically supposed to be a little bit faster. Um, right, uh, we should probably mention how charging works because charging is a really important upgrade uh, in this game. So charging changes the uh, main projectile, the uh, two parts projectile. Like it's it's made up of two two pellets, and each pellet does does damage. Uh, if you charge the beam, every pellet does the same damage as a missile, so that's, that's 10 damage. Uh, but it also has uh, an extra part right at the arm cannon, which does a bit of damage as well. So in a lot of instances, you want to hit things point blank to do an uh, additional bit of damage. And that's what you do on the stabilizers. If you do that on the stabilizer, it one-shots them. Uh, it also one-shots doors which is really useful because now we don't have to wait uh, as much for them to stop shooting beams and open up. And it in general is just really useful for killing all sorts of enemies. So it's like Exodo's stream actually cut off. Oh no. I'm not sure if... I am going to check IRC, see if he will. Okay, so there's been no comments on the IRC since the raid started. So I hope Exodo knows about it, but he might not. <laughs> Good news, if he, if, he has his, if he doesn't know about it and he has his chat on, he'll probably see the Twitch message telling him that he's constantly trying to reconnect the chat, and that might give it away. Unless his internet's still up, then in which case someone in his chat will probably mention something. I... okay, so... On the Exodo situation, I do believe his internet fell out, because he just disconnected from the IRC channel as well. Mm. Hopefully from, comes back up. Yeah, so I think he's probably trying to fix his internet at the moment. Which is really unfortunate, because that's gonna give Hubert a bit of time to catch up, assuming he, if he stops playing. 
And this is how the legend of Jubert continues. <laughs> <laughs>
So unfortunately, there's... Looks like most of our runners are leaving Sector 2, bar Hubert, and at this point all of our runners should be heading to Sector 4, which is basically the water sector. At the start of Sector 4, you'll notice there's a bit of electrified water um, throughout the area, and a lot of times it's actually faster to take damage and go through the water than to actually try to avoid it. So, one of the things you'll see our runners do is that they will go through the water and actually intentionally take damage in order to take a slightly faster route through the rooms. The electrified water in cells is effective more than regular water. Because it just does damage and nothing else. Okay, now Hubert has defeated Zazabi, so he'll be leaving Sector 2 as well in the Sector 4. And I believe Eagle is getting... is only a few rooms away from getting to the boss fight, so... Right, so Ceres is kind of also a bit of RNG, not not super much, but um, you want to hit Ceres with two point blank charge beams in order to kill it. And the first beam is is always the same. He does the same attack to start with, and you can get one free shot in. But for the second one, you need to react to what pattern he's doing out of like four different patterns, I think. Uh, and some of them are really hard to hit. Uh, I personally don't even try to hit him when he's doing like arts. Uh, like Eagle tried to and missed now, so he has to wait uh, uh, for him to be vulnerable again. So it looks like Eagle finished with a four cycle Ceres. Uh, you can kill him at, in two cycles. If I'm gonna force the, um, Yeah, he missed. He missed the, the third shot too. Second one. Yeah. So. Um, you basically want to kill Ceres in two shots, and if, if you don't aim that flare correctly, uh, you won't be able to kill Ceres right away. So it's really important that you do, you know, take your time and aim uh, if you know the predictions. Got the two cycle, I wasn't paying attention. Mm, no, we didn't. <laughs> it's like a three cycle, I guess. Yeah, three cycle. Yeah, it's important to note that if you see um, that Sarah changes colors based on throughout the fight, and after the first charge shot, if you landed the shot correctly, Ceres changes to somewhat of a darker gray orange color, or reddish color, I did. But... If it takes, like, if you messed up again, you'll notice that Ceres actually will turn completely, pretty much completely black and red. So, ideally, if you landed both shots correctly, you would, the first shot would, he would turn the little gray orange color and then the second shot would kill him. But... So uh, one little trick that Eagle did a few seconds ago with the Shine Spark that didn't mention <coughs> is a trick called Low Height. You've already seen every runner do it after getting Shine Spark. You'll notice that every runner in the very next room, they sort of Shine Spark in a two block high area, and this is called Low Height. Basically, for the one that, for the set that Eagle did, you want to um, basically shine spark as close to the ground as possible without actually touching it. If you do it properly, and as we saw, Exodo also did it, you will basically shine spark at pretty much floor height, and it allows you to make it through 
allows you to extend your sparks much farther and launch them a little bit earlier in a lot of cases. If they failed this, if they had failed the spark, they would have had to. Have, hopefully, they would have corrected themselves mid spark and spark to the left first. But either way, they would have to go left and then charge the speed boost the old-fashioned way to get through the speed booster blocks instead of using the shine spark they got from running from the previous rooms. So it looks like you were stopping to save here just before the uh, service fights. Not much uh, going on for Sector 3. Uh, it, it's probably the least if not having any RNG <coughs> uh, Basically, it's basically all skill and one of the great perfect shots markets will be shot uh, And so, this is one of those spots where you see that uh, the gap in the skill between the players. There are several really hard and complicated time for us to be. Even though there's no ID, you, like you said, it tends to you get different results. Right, I, I, I like to call it the uh, skill test. That's I mean, this is really, um, after Sector 4, the RNG comes down a lot, things start to get more consistently doing. Either like, you getting the same thing for the same input, or being able to handle whatever the RNG does without just having to wait, which happens a lot with the earlier bosses. Hubert's having some difficulties fighting the core after series. It can be tricky if you, if you get out of the, the pattern you're expecting. So Eagle was able to do the data spark, which is a very difficult shine spark trick. It looks very fancy. I think it saves about half a second. I'm not too sure, but it saves some time. Even... It's really hard to do, and you need to kind of slide across the data room activator button to have it sort of depress a tiny bit before you store the shine spark so you can have as much left of the shine spark as possible when you gain control back of sun. It's really tight to do. So uh, in a very short time frame you just saw Eagle kill the Sector 3 boss which is box. It's a fairly straightforward fight. You want to open it up by shooting him with either a charge beam and a super missile, or just two super missiles, as he jumps on screen. And this is for, and this is primarily just in order to manipulate his behavior. If you don't do this, he'll basically keep going to the left until you land a hit on him, I believe. And so you obviously do not want that to happen because for two reasons. One. He all he always has to go all the way to the right side of the screen before dying, so to speak. So if he's like all the way on the left side, that's a pretty long walk that he'll make at the end. On top of that, it obviously makes it allows you it allows him to stop quicker and allows you to unload with even more missiles. And that will help you kill him a little bit faster. It doesn't take too long to kill him, and it's a fairly short fight, but it's very easy for the fight to go wrong if you miss space or miss aim a few of your missiles, so you have to be extremely careful. It's a very static fight. If you, if you do it properly, it's going to be the same every time. But if you mess, it, like a small mess up, can mean he's. It's very hard to recover if you uh, if you the tiniest mistake. OK, 
Okay, just to recap, uh, it looks like Eagle is ahead by a significant amount. Yes. Uh, ahead of Fozzie, that is. And uh, for the other race, it looks like Exodo is ahead, just leaving Sector 3 while Huber is just entering, or leaving Sector 4 and entering Sector 3. Yeah, as we get, again, we're almost 40 minutes into the run, and as you get farther in the run, you'll the skill gap widens pretty significantly. Right now, it's you can obviously sort of see Hubert and Eagle are on the opposite ends of the spectrum here, but as the race goes on, that gap gets even wider, significantly wider. While Fozzie isn't too far behind Eagle, it'll probably, the gap will probably likely get bigger. That's still like anything could happen. I'm seeing crazy things happen in this game. <laughs> this gap, not. <laughs> yeah, I, I would not count them out yet. I definitely would not do that. Yeah, there was this one race that I saw where uh, one of the runners was ahead by like 40 minutes and died at, at the at the last fight, the last boss was not able to recover. I can't remember his name. That seems pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to do that, especially in like a high pressure situation. Like imagine his if it happened is... to someone in this tournament. Like imagine if you were the top seed and that happened to you <laughs> and then you lost to the bottom seed because of it. Like how wow. terrible would that be? Now that you mention it, I, I think that that runner was the top seed, although I can't remember his name. Yeah, we'll remember at some point. So, uh, here Eagle is doing a trick called Sack Skip, which is basically fairly straightforward. You you basically are trying to sick, skip Sacks and get out of the room earlier than, instead of waiting for him to do his whole little move out of the room. You can, you can speed up uh, all of the SAX encounters by just running past running past it in various ways. The the first one in Sector 2 is really difficult and very, very dangerous to screw it up. So none of the runners try this this run. And honestly, not many do even in very serious runs. But all the other encounters are fairly trivial to just run past it. So one thing I noticed Fozzie did just a second ago was that um, he was trying to evade one of the Ice X and he was pushing it really close. Those Ice X do a significant amount of damage if they hit you and you don't want to hit them because the moment Samus is vulnerable to Ice, which is part of the reason you went to Sector 6 in the story, but also because of that you don't want to um, run into an Ice X because they will do a significant amount of damage to you and they will chase you down at least until you get the various suit upgrade, which we just saw Eagle get, then at that point the Ice X become harmless. And a cute little tidbit about the game is uh, the Blue X learn that you're immune to them in that room, and they're still trying to chase you, but after that room they, they try to run away from you because they're learning. It's a cute little thing. Yeah, I, whenever I first noticed that, I'm like, I thought that was a little, that was a small, that was a cute little detail that I added in the game. One of the main themes, obviously, is that the X can kind of adapt to their environment, and they kind of, they did a really good job of explaining and keeping that consistent throughout the game. So, uh, Mega Core X fight, which we've already seen two of our runners defeat. The fight is fairly straightforward. What you want to do is you want to get it in the... It starts in the top left corner, and what you want to do is you want to charge up charge beam, do a neutral jump, not a spin jump, because if you do a spin jump, you'll do a suedo screw attack. You want to do a neutral jump and damage boost into it and hit its core with the charge beam and the flare. If you do this you sh properly, you should be able to kill it in four hits, but it's very easy to mess up hits, so you want to be careful. I mean, you want to keep it sort of inside the left wall, like you want to hit it in a way that sort of bounces left. Uh, but this is one of those fights where if you screw anything up, it gets really hard to recover because it's, it moves very unpredictably. 
once you get him out of the facility. Uh, also worth mentioning is that doubles uh, are way harder with suit missiles compared to normal missiles. They yeah. have uh, a lot more cooldown time between shots that you have to wait and they and they move faster. Yeah, every missile upgrade you get in the game makes it a bit more difficult to get doubles. So whenever you see them fight the last core X, it is the most difficult boss to get doubles on explicitly because of that reason. So, uh, runner update, as we can see, Hubert is now leaving Sector 3 and heading to Sector 6, which everyone else is currently leaving. And I believe both Eagle and Exodo are both kind of out of the sector now at this point. Eagle looks like he's already in the next sector, and Exodo is currently about to take the elevator out of Sector 6. And then Fozzie is also on that heading that way as well. So the start, so Sector 5 is a bit interesting and can be a bit confusing. The You basically visit here, I believe, three times, and for the first two times, you sort of go through this loop of operations where you go down, you trigger, and for the first time through, you go down, you um, trigger the data room, then you will head over and go to the actual data room itself after, again, just runs after activating the security locks. And then you have to loop back around in order to get back out. So every single time you complete a step, so to speak, you have to loop back around. So the first time you do a security door, finish the loop, go back to the data room, get the data room, get the, get the ice missile upgrade, and then go to through the loop again to get out. And then later on, they'll revisit this area to get power bombs, and it's the same process, except you don't have to open the security door. So, you'll go to get the data room again, get power bomb upgrade, finish the loop to get out. And this is kind of important because there's a bit of infamy from making a pretty common mistake that a lot of runners will do, is they will forget where they are in that sort of pattern if they haven't been paying super, if they haven't been paying as much attention as they should have. This can cause a runner to go the wrong way and can lose a pretty big chunk of time because a lot of times this usually means they have to do the loop again. And that's a, having to go through that many rooms is a very big time loss and not something you want to have happen. Right, and there's also a chance that the runner might forget that uh, their objective, like for being in Sector 5 first time, you go around and you get the security door and you might forget that you were supposed to get the ice missiles <laughs> and just be without picking it up and have to come back. In general, just a pretty confusing sector and you tend to auto autopilot a lot because nothing interesting is really happening. So you get kind of stuck in a certain mindset. <laughs> just need to stay uh, stay sharp, and it's not that hard uh, if, you, if you're actually paying attention. Is Exodo actually going to go for this? Or I think he might have given up all. <laughs> what did he try? I, I was hoping we'd see at least one runner do it. He, he tried to go for reverse ice. He missed the Shine Spark landing, though, and he did try again. <laughs> So you, you can do the getting two ice missiles uh, the back way. Uh, it involves a frame perfect shine charge and then a pretty tight shine charge after that. It's really quite hard and it saves about a second of time, so no one really does it, but it's, it looks cool. What's that? Emer what? There's an emergency? Of course, an emergency. 
There's a lot of blinking lights on Eagle Stream. Is that the emergency? It almost looks like a rave. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is a party. So, uh, the section the Eagle has now entered, affectionately known in the Fusion community as Emergency and Franker Z, is the section where, after clearing Sector 5 the first time, Sector 3 is about to explode, basically, and destroy the entire space station. So, Samus has to go through and get to the melt, get to the, <sighs> can't even say it right, the furnace area, and try and stop it from blowing up. And... This whole section is actually one of one of the most I would say one of the most technical areas in the whole speedrun, honestly. It's fairly difficult. There really isn't a whole lot of RNG to worry about. And it's pretty infamously because you can also see your finish time at the end. So that's a neat little thing some runners will compare to each other to see how they're doing. And this whole section is very competitive and also very tough to get through. It involves a lot of using enemies as platforms of the ice missiles and also making sure you time your shots properly because if you don't, you're going to run into an enemy and take a pretty noticeable chunk of damage. So as I mentioned before, a lot of times you try to get doubles on as many core X's as possible, and you noticed, I mentioned earlier how there was a setup, when we saw in Charge Beam, there was a setup where you could get it, get the core X stuck below a platform and basically spam missiles down at it. This setup does not work on the wide core X, primarily because you do not have enough space above you in order to get enough height, in order to time your missiles properly to actually more so the problem that we now have ice missiles. And that's why it doesn't really work anymore. Yeah, as yeah, as mentioned before, like every missile upgrade you get makes it harder to get doubles and ice missiles is included in that. So as a result of that diff added difficulty and the fact that you don't have enough and that causes the addition of ice missiles makes it significantly harder for you to actually get the doubles. And that's why you don't have enough space above you to actually be able to land them. And so you have to do a different setup, which we saw Eagle do. So it looks like Exodo is coming up on the end of the emergency. First double, let's see if he can get the second. No, no. He just needs one more missile, though. So we saw Exodo, he wasn't able to get the second double, which, which is unfortunate. It's gonna get a 433. That's a really good time from Meltdown. Yeah, that's def that is definitely a really good Meltdown. I didn't even see his... I, didn't. <laughs> I don't remember Eagle's time, but uh, 433 is definitely really strong. Getting the first double, I think. Yeah, I get also getting a double double. It's cool. Like a lot of runners compare the the end and time during meltdown, but it's sort of unfair because it's getting a good time is really dependent on getting a good idor, which is complete R and D. Still fun though, compare. Eagle moving up towards saving the animals. 
I don't know if he does impossible. I don't think Eagle does impossible. Uh, yeah, I don't think he does. I don't think any of the runners will attempt that strat. Not entirely sure about Ozzy and Exodo, though. I doubt it. Not many actually try. We have we have a certain strategy for this room, which has been dubbed the impossible strat because there was a runner who couldn't do it, and he had to, he had fun naming things. But that is not probably impossible. It is pretty hard, but it's not. It's not really like one of the hard tricks in the game. Either. Yeah, so one of the things I saw Eagle do was that he did a little bit of a setup for getting a Shine Spark right there. We, for the longest time, we generally relied on, I believe, a Frame Perfect trick where you basically store a Shine Spark on the Crumble Box. But um, whenever the Speed Booster blocks broke. But we kind of discovered, I think because of a similar trick we found in Zero Mission, we looked, it got looked into. But a setup was found where if you stand in like a certain spot, and then do the, um, and then just hold left to do the speed booster. It will actually break the block, and you will be past it for an easy shine charge. And then you'll just fall down and do the shine spark out of the shaft. Oh no, we actually saw an example of Hubert, who was still in Sector 5, where he kind of got lost for a second and went the wrong way. So as said, that's not an uncommon mistake to make in Sector 5. Did he do that? It wasn't like he didn't do anything completely out of order, he just went to the wrong room, but... Hmm. He thought he had ice missiles already, so he went to the wrong room. Oh, okay. That was actually a fairly minor mistake on Hubert's part for Sector 5. Usually... It's usually if a runner makes a mistake there, it's a lot worse than that. So, if you had to make any mistake in Sector 5, that would be an okay one to make. Right, so, so uh. It looks like uh, Eagle is on his way to Sector 5 once more, while Fozzie is going to save the animals now. Uh, Eagle also picking up his final missile tank, and he's putting him at 45. It's a bit um, like different how many missiles people pick up, it changes from runner to runner. It's generally accepted to be uh, between uh, 40 and 50, I guess. Did anyone pick up 50? I'm not sure. It's 40 or 45 is like, pretty divided in the community. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it's kind of like... I'm not even sure how... Think so much has changed in last year, I'm not entirely sure, but I've always heard that 35 was the optimal in theory, but because of RNG and other factors, it was a bit difficult to do, so most runners stuck with 45 or 40 missiles, and that's, as said, that's been fiercely debated. Right, there's Usually, one point where... Uh... It was thought that you, if you wanted to get a 45, uh, you'd have a 45 in game time. You'd have to get 40 missiles, but Eagle proved that you can still get a 45 while having 45 missiles. Um, grabbing the extra missile tank, putting at 45, is, is such a minor cost, and it, it does add a fair bit of consistency. Um, right. Especially for stuff like Nightmare and Yakuza stuff. But the thing is, we have a fight later on that's just a huge sink for ammo. And picking up 40 missiles isn't really enough to kill it. So we need to use Charge Beam a couple of times. And it, it, it's still faster than picking up the, an extra tank. But because of that fight, picking up an extra tank at 45 is, is only very, very slightly slower. It's only a, like 2 or 3 seconds at most. Okay, and it looks like Eber is now um, in the emergency. So, Zelda is a very sizable lead here, and um, I, I'm gonna have to say all it takes right now for Zelda to win is just to not die. 
I, I have not seen him save, so, um, you know, it could still be anyone's game. I'm expecting Azoto is probably going to save with the ship, I think. Would make sense. That's like the f most popular safety save. Since you don't even need to go out of your way to do it. We, we tend to go out of our way to not save. Like, it's, it's less effort to do the save. But it does waste uh, a few seconds of saving animation. So, in a, in a race, there's almost no reason to not do a safe to save. Really. Oh, you would accidentally talk to Adam again. No. <laughs> that happens. You, you get used to wanting to talk to Adam at every navigation room, but uh, at a couple of places you just want to run through, and there's actually no no forced conversation. Start of emergency is one, going back up to getting animals is another, and there are a couple more. I blame it on Adam's mind tricks. <laughs> like, everyone has done that at some point. Okay, so it looks like Eagle did not pick up the speed booster, so he'll be forced to get 50 missiles here. Ooh. Um, as mentioned earlier, having 45 or even 50 missiles will make a certain boss a lot faster to kill. So it's not that big a deal if you actually if you accidentally pick up 50 missiles. You don't want to pick up that missile tank anyway because you want to get a speed booster to do the speed ring. Just because it's faster, but uh, the spitters can randomly block you, and if they do, you have to use a power bomb there, and then you're forced to pick up the missile tank and mine as well. Yeah, it, it, you would lose more time trying to run back and start the speed booster again, so it, you just have to pick up the missile anyway. <laughs> So I guess we're about to see if Exodo is going to save the ship or not. We will have to find out. I'm hopeful he does, but... <laughs> I want to see if Gilbert can see that. <laughs> I'm assuming he will, but or because I... I would say Hubert would be one of the luckiest runners ever if that if he did not save and Exodo <laughs> died. So I don't think Hubert knows that setup doesn't work, but he is attempting to do the other setup. It's not really trying to do doubles, so that's just uh, if you're not trying to do doubles, that's just a very easy setup to do the core in general. That's what we used to do before we started thinking that doubles were a thing that was like a reasonable thing we could do on, on uh, Corex, I being Corex. Core. Yeah, you can, any anytime there's like platforms like that in a Corex fight, well, for the I, the I door, the I beam ones, ones where you can only shoot them in the eye, you can, you, all, I'm pretty sure, all, yeah, all of them, you can actually trap below a platform and basically do a safe kill on them. I mean, all of them that have platforms in the room. Yeah. There are only two beam core X's you'll see that you actually don't have the option of doing that on because there are no platforms in the room and they are plasma beam and wave beam. Which coincidentally are the next two that we'll be seeing. So it looks like Eagle had a pretty good fight with Yakuza. He, I believe, had two rounds and was able to get uh, double missiles on Corex three times, um, killing the, the Corex with three double missiles the fastest way you can do it. So uh, it looks like he'll pull ahead here if Fozzy won't be able to produce the same. Yeah, so um, one of the things about Yakuza is right off the bat, 
at the very start of the match, it has a, it'll go around the room and walk around a little bit, and you can speed it up by letting it grab you and then escaping by button mashing. But he can do it from one to four times. Ideally, you want him to only do it once, but you it's RNG, so you have no control over it. And then Exodo, he's, okay, there he goes. I think he's safe at this point. Took a lot of damage in that fight. So Eagle's coming up on Natori, which is the boss where we need a lot of missiles. And he has a lot of missiles now, so he won't actually need to use charge him at all, I think. Yes, pump missiles. Probably won't even need to use power bombs. We usually use power bombs in between missile shots as much as we can because they do slightly, slightly more missile or slightly more damage than one missile, and we don't have enough missiles to do the fight normally. So we substitute a few with power bombs. Yeah. So that was uh, that was basically a near. That was basically a perfect core X fight for Eagle. So the magic number for Notori is 48. It takes 48 of either missiles, charge beam, or power bomb hits to, to phase him and get to his uh, plasma beam phase. Where he... Actually, no, that's in total to just kill him yeah, outright. Yeah, that's in total. Yeah, so um, with Eagle entering the fight with 50 missiles and um, planting a power bomb as he entered the room, uh, he would have finished the fight with three missiles left, which is enough to start the uh, core X fight. So this is uh, what we were talking about earlier, when the more missiles you have, the easier that fight becomes. So uh, next on the on the Netherai fight should be Exodo, and he has the smaller missile count. I believe he did he only grab forty. Or did he I, get main deck missile? I think I think he only has four. Okay, so we'll start. You'll see his start of the fight will be a little bit different. He'll sort of alternate between shooting a charge shot, laying a power bomb, and shooting a missile until Metarai's health is dropped enough for him to just unload the rest of his missiles on him. You can also see it like in this first phase of the fight, if you stand on the very far right of that platform, the leftmost flower doesn't release any any spores. It makes that a, a perfect safe spot you can stand there and just wait for it. I'm totally using a lot of charge beams, so I don't think you needed to use that many charge beams. For 40 missiles, you would need a total of 8 charge beams and power bombs to kill him, but you'll have no missiles. So some of the runners will actually add a little more, like maybe 10, so that they can finish the fight with two missiles and um, set up for the double on the 4x. I usually do six turkeys and five barbells. So uh, Eagle did this a little trick called Nightmare Spark. He's now entered Sector 5 for the last time. And he's going to fight a last boss called Nightmare. And at the very start of the area, you generally want to get a Shine Charge and get a Shine Spark that basically takes you across most of the rooms. Eagle, I believe, did it perfectly, and he got his Spark right after running through the nav room, the recharge room, the save room, and then landed and did the Spark through the room at the bottom of the area. And if you do that properly, you'll Spark across all those rooms no problem. But if you mess it up, you either get hit and lose your charge, or you just aren't quick and you run out in time. There's a little bit of a backup strat you can do in the first big room where you go to the go to the floor and basically just charge your spark there, and then jump up and do a spark through the rooms. You can also space boost instead of actually doing a shine spark but that is a lot more difficult <laughs> it does save time i believe but it's a lot more difficult. i 
I'm actually surprised to see that Fozzy is not that far behind from Evil. I mean, he, he is considerably far, but I kind of expected him to be a little bit more further behind. Um, this might be a unique Fozzy. I'm not sure. Let me check the time. So Fozzy's PB is a 52, um, and it seems like he, he's actually trying to keep up with Eagle as best as he can. He's doing pretty well. He's, he's only like, what, two minutes behind Eagle or something? It looks that way, yes. Okay, so now um, I guess it'll be the Exodo we'll be getting to the... Or no, Fozzy will probably be... Okay, no, I'm just... Okay. <sighs> it looks like Exodo will be the next person to get to the um, Nightmare fight. Which we didn't really get a chance to explain it just a second ago, but... Nightmare has three phases, really, to the first, to before it turns into its core X. The first phase is whenever it starts, it will basically move up and down the room a little bit, and you'll want to hit its little gun that it has beneath, little cannon that it has beneath it, and when you plant it enough shots, it will um, switch to basically a low-gravity mode. And this phase of the fight is going to be identical to the first phase, except gravity is lowered, so everything's a bit slower, and you... Don't and your missiles actually will instantly drop, will basically drop to the ground instead of actually going upwards. But you can kind of get around it by shooting night by basically jumping up and standing next to Nightmare's little cannon and shooting a mi shooting a missile point blank, which will not be avoidable by Nightmare. The missiles are sort of just of a bonus in phase two, anyway. It's the plasma that you're doing most of the damage. And if the fight's done correctly, we should barely even notice there is a first phase. It, it's over in, in a single shot if we do it first. Yeah, so for the second, the third phase of the fight, which we now see Exodo on, is first off, Nightmare will go to the right side of the screen and basically begin to... His cannon will disintegrate and his face will be exposed. From there, you'll want to open up with a charge beam and unload your missiles on it. After that happens, it'll enter. He will once he gets to the left side of the screen, because it'll start creeping towards you. He will begin to move around the room, and I believe it starts out randomly. But after that point, you can manipulate his movement based on where you go. It's sort of random. It's, it's very complicated. It, it, it's for practical reasons. It's, it's random. Yeah, it follows. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, it follows the thing. It, it, it's really complicated and we... <laughs> yeah, For so basically... The purposes, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> and, again, manipulating his move, it's one of the tougher things I think a lot of new runners struggle with. And that's part of the reason why that fight can be one of the most frustrating as a new runner, because if you don't know how to manipulate its movement well, you're just going to get hit a lot, and it's not fun. <laughs> And you, you want to manipulate him to be in a specific spot so that when he starts... Like, first of all, you need to get him into a spot where you will start moving slowly towards the ladder. And then you want that to be a spot where you can actually hit him properly uh, from the ladder, which you, you might get him too high and then you can't hit him from the ladder, which is terrible. So it's, it's a really hard thing to learn how to manipulate his movement well. Yeah, as I mentioned, you probably could see some of that lag that Fozzy was suffering from at the start of that phase of the Nightmare fight. The Wii U version is a bit slow when it comes to the Nightmare fight, so... It's an un that was basically time loss that was completely out of Fozzy's control. But he had a really solid fight, so that's good. We got no Mr. Box though, that's kind of a problem. Oh, looks like he landed a double. So we got one double for that. Okay, so now again we sort of see. Okay, so runner update, both. Now Eagle has finished lower sector 4, which is the area that um, we see Exodo in right now, and Fuzzy is about to enter. 
Lower Sector 4 is one of the, probably one of the most, definitely one of the most dangerous areas in the game. Primarily because a lot of the enemies do a ton of damage here, and... Hubert is in danger of dying. He's got 26 health. I... he... yeah, I think the safe move there would have been better. I can't remember, can Spitters interrupt your Shine Spark? No. Okay, so that would have been safer for him. If he had just kept going in Spark, he would have been fine, actually. But... So he made it out of there safely. <laughs> uh, forgot mm -hmm. to power bomb, um, but that shouldn't be a problem. As long as he's alive, I guess. Yeah, I'm, he's gonna save the ship for sure, I think. Yeah. So as I was talking about Lower Sector 4, due to all the damage these enemies do and a lot, and the fairly difficult patterns a lot of them have to get through, it can be a pain to go through that area, and it's not uncommon to see runners die there. But practice it a few times, and once you know it pretty well, you can usually get through without dying. I mean, it's not terribly hard to knock a hit, it's just that you aren't, aren't allowed to make that many mistakes. So, uh, you saw there Eagle destroyed the Wave Beam Corax after defeating Xbox, which is the X infected version of the box fight we saw earlier. The Wave Beam Corax, both for a ton of reasons, partially because of the ceiling height and partially because of lack of platforms for any easy setups or anything, makes it extremely difficult to get doubles on that Corax. I was sort of infamously told that even the task struggled with it whenever yeah, it was can, being created. Task can barely do it. Yeah, so it's definitely not feasible for a human to do it, so you won't see runners go for that. I mean, in real time, you can, you can, it's hard to do doubles on a normal core with diffusion missiles. Diffusion missiles are just really, really slow. So doing it on a, on I core is it's it's not reasonable at all. Okay, so we see Eagle. He just so now um we've Fozzie is okay. So Exodo is about to go and fight Xbox fairly soon. Bozzy is not too far behind him, but he's still in lower sector 4, and we see Hubert fighting Yakuza at the moment. And now Eagle has just escaped from the little Metroid breeding area and is now about to hit the river. So in the area uh, on the way to the sea, we find a kind of interesting enemy where gold pirates you're supposed to shoot from behind, like they're, they're immune if you shoot from the front. But the way the game checks this is if you're just facing the same direction when the shot is hitting. So you can shoot, you can shoot a charge beam and turn around before it hits them, and it will hit them from the front. So it's really useful. Those enemies are super annoying to do with them. Also something interesting about the distribution missiles is that the, the shockwave not only freezes enemies, it also destroys missile blocks. Which I think we'll see, yeah, Eagle shoots at the fusion here to destroy the missile blocks for later when he's coming back. There we see the gold fire. He got hit out of his uh, second charge beam, so he wasn't actually able to turn around to the charge beam thing. Alright, so it looks like Eagle's approaching Ridley now. And Fozzie's on his way to Xbox.
and it looks like Hubert had just finished killing Yakuza, and Isolde's on his way to Ridley as well. So, Arash, uh, you want to explain the Ridley fight? Uh, sure. So, in when when we speed run and we try to kill Ridley, um, we we use the charge beam more often than missiles. Uh, casual, a lot of casual runners uh, think that they could spam missiles and then do more damage to Ridley, which is false because of the way that the wave beam works. Uh, the wave beam goes through enemies and it does damage for every frame that is inside the enemy's hitbox. So if you were to uh, shoot a charge beam directly across its hitbox diagonally, you, you would in effect do significant damage, more damage than uh, your missiles could possibly do. So um, you would want to make sure that every time you hit Ridley, that you hit him directly across diagonally for a faster kill. Uh, when, and a lot of runners also um, tend to panic when they get grabbed by Ridley and start shooting missiles. Uh, once again, all you would have to do is just make sure that you um, shoot a charge beam through him. Yeah, well, while making the zero percent task, I got uh, a charge beam to do more than uh, ten times the damage of the missile. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of damage. Charge beam is is way stronger, I guess, really. Looks like Hubert's opting for another safety save here. I. I think his hopes might be slowly disappearing, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I still don't know if I if Exodo's actually safe or not. Do you know if he's safe at the, sh uh, at the ship? I wasn't paying attention. I had fully admit that I made the same mistake, so I have no idea if he's safe at the ship or not. Okay. <laughs> you if he made did it. not, then uh, at this point, if Exodo had died at any point from now on, he's most likely going to lose if he did not save. I've seen Uber do a lot of safety saves, but he hasn't died yet, so... Yeah, I think he's... Hopefully, I was about to... I was worried there for a second, I thought he was about to die in Nidorai. So, uh, Eagle has now entered what is, and is hope fairly close to leaving basically the longest series of text boxes in the game. It's not uncommon for even if a runner is like has a minute or so below the PB the other player, you might actually see them in the text box at the same time. It's extremely long and... It's like three minutes. Yeah. So, it's definitely a relief when you get out of it. Like, it's still not over. We have more text boxes. Yes, but uh, thankfully, though, Eagle is basically at the end of it, so... Yeah. So, and uh, now, obviously, we've seen Exodo. He is defeated Ridley, and now he's going to, um... Go to the same text box that Eagle is currently having to suffer through at the moment. <laughs> And obviously Fozzie is about to head to the same to the really fight now, and Hubert is about to go fight Nightmare. I think Exodo might be pushing PB pace as well. 
It depends. I. Yeah. It's kind of hard to say, because Eagle is... I need to know what face Eagle is on in order to... I think right Exodo now. is probably on PB place, but it's close, if he isn't. not on Amazing Face, I think he's been playing sort of sloppy for, for Eagle standards. <laughs> Eagle standards. Eagle's known to be a very consistent runner, uh, pushing... 45s, 46s, very frequently because of how how well he executes during the race or any any runs or anything of that nature. He's also a the world record holder for Metroid Zero Mission, so he's got a lot of experience and he, he's like a machine really when he plays. Yeah, you all think to take the safe to say before SEX. It's just a good choice. Which, to be completely honest, I don't think that has to do with the risk of dying. Really? Maybe. Maybe, but I also think there's another part of it that he's probably worried about, too. This oh, could possibly potential. be uh, a the high 46. Yeah. Thankfully, Eagle's fight went well, but the second phase of that fight you just saw him kill has a very real risk of actually softlocking your... It's not, it's, it's never, it never happens. I've seen it happen like twice ever. So Eagle just got the perfect sex fight with the four beams and the triple double for X. Oh, I got four beams too? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a crazy fight. So I think he might be on a high 46 or a very low 47 pace here. Meanwhile, Zoro is just finishing the cutscene with Adam, and is on his way to fight sex. Hubert is actually, um, I think at this point he's fairly safe, but he took a lot of damage. He's and he's gonna save before the nightmare he's... fight. Which is a good choice um, for a beginner runner. From what I understand, Hubert actually learned the, the run the day before his first race. <laughs> uh, so there, there's still a lot of things he might be unsure of, and taking frequent saves is not a bad idea. I must understand it. So, so against, now... Against Omega Metroid, we want to get uh, a specific positioning that lets the beam like, the beam still hits uh, per frame, so we want to get in a specific position where it hits uh, as much as possible per shot. And if you get it good enough, we can completely stun lock the boss and it just doesn't move at all. Yeah, which Eagle got, so that's... Okay. It's Regal. Yes. Uh, probably a 47? This looks like it's a 47. Yeah, that's... It could be a very high for the I think it's a pretty strong. Sure. I would definitely say that's likely. It's a little 40 seconds. But I think that might be one of the fastest runs in this tournament so far. Yeah, it looks like Hubert didn't know what to do in the first at the start of the third phase of Nightmare Fight, because Nightmare has a lot more health than what he should have, so... Exodo in danger of dying here. If he gets shot by beam one more time, <laughs> he might die. But he looks like he's able to trap the Corex and kill it safely. I would be extra safe if I were him, though, because I do think that... I don't know if you're wrong, but I think there's a... I think if you hit any part of the Omega other than it's... Get hit by any part of the Omega other than it's swipe, it can actually kill you. Yes. Absolutely. So he... If I were him, I would be safe and just let him swipe me. <laughs> I've seen some runs um, die because of the runner 
doing a bomb jump to have Omega kind of swipe him like a baseball, uh, swipe Samus like a baseball, but do it too early and hit Omega's mouth and die that way. <laughs> so it would be a wise idea not to do anything funny. So uh, Hubert's gonna be unfortunately this point whenever Raz is gonna get speed booster. We never know. I mean, given Hubert's track record, he's likely to win here. Uh, <laughs> simply because of Exodo dying. Exodo was able to get the low high going. That's uh, Exodo does not have a lot of health. Yeah, I was he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> After I made that. After I made that comment about anything else of Omega killing you, I was almost half expecting that to happen. Yeah, he, he took the first part of the Omega fight really carefully. <laughs> I think he could still die. Like, Omega hurts a lot. Uh oh. He was not able to get the quick kill, so hopefully he'll, he'll be able to recover. Uh oh. The Legend of Hubert. <laughs> oh, so <good>. that was <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we're fine. We <laughs> okay, did it. So it was just messing like, yeah. with us. He wanted to tease us a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. The last one, it, Omega was so close to swiping and killing him. I I can guarantee that Axel's heart was beating so hard. <laughs> So, uh, oh, I don't know what Fozzie is trying to, okay. He's doing the easy strat, but he's messing up his jumps a little bit, but that's okay, because he has a few E-tanks, he can take a few hits. He's just doing extra damage. He's good attacking into the extra damage, he does the extra. Oh no, Exodo did something to his game. I think he might have loaded a safe state. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I mean, he finished. He finished, yes. Yeah, so he is fine, but I would have liked to have known if I had a PB or not. So that's. So did that happen? One twenty-one forty-three. That's probably a fifty. I think Exodo has a 51, maybe? So that right. probably would have been a PB. Exodo has a... No, he has a 49 on PB, so I, I don't think he is. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> then in that case, that reset might have been intentional. He might have felt more. Oh, he's really close to dying! Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so Fauzi barely got out of that fight alive. <laughs> a lot of close, uh, close fights here. I think everyone's just trying to give us a heart attack before this race is over. <laughs> I think most everyone was really close to dying from this race. Eagle had um, some struggle in lower sector 4, I saw his health drop quite a bit. Uh, but I don't think it affected how we played. Yeah, and as expected, Eagle gets a 47, so... And we don't know what Exodo got, which, as you said, was probably a 50 or so. So, uh, now we're waiting on Bozzy and Hubert to finish, and, uh, just go ahead and mention congratulations to both Exodo and Eagle, because they won their races, so... We know who's gonna be advancing into winners now. I'm seeing spoilers in chat, I think. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Fossey needs to not touch the Omega body oh, and just the clouds. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That's unfortunate. I mean, I've done that too. I mean, not not in a race, and it didn't actually kill me, but I've got him hit there. So I see where that happened. I really hope. Okay, I really hope Fozzie's not starting over with the assumption that Eagle 
<laughs> die because that would not. Okay. The bus is gonna catch up. <laughs> I think. I think we have the races mixed here. I think Fozzie was supposed to play against Hubert and have that result. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> that would have been really good. It would be nice for Hubert to win two games in a row by your opponent losing or dying to Omega. Specifically to Omega. <laughs> Omega is secretly Hubert's best friend. Well, again, congratulations to Uzoto and Equal. They both finished. They both won their races, and they'll be moving on to the winners bracket. Moving on in the winners bracket, so round three to be precise, if I'm assuming correctly. I believe I'm gonna check what their opponent is really quickly. Okay, so Exodo is gonna have to fight Paulsmore next. Ooh. And Eagle is going to have to fight the winner of Rasu versus Mandatobi. Which will be uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. So, uh, Rasu, who do you think is gonna win that race? <laughs> It's, uh, I, I don't know, I'd, I'd have to say that I, I would go for Ross on that one. Completely unbiased. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point we're trying for Hubert to finish, he's going about to fight Xbox, I believe. Yet another save save. He hasn't died yet, has he? No. So. <laughs> Think with the amount of e tanks you has, he should be fine. But again, it being there's. <laughs> when he knew it didn't run the it. Whenever you know you're finding someone who's better than you, it's never a bad idea to be safe because they could very easily die. And I doubt Hubert's aware that Exodo finished either, so. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he's checking the risk cap or not. Yeah, he might. Uh, I think he'll be fine. I don't think he's in any danger of running out of missiles either. Yeah, he had 60, I believe, entering the fight. He just needs to be careful with his with, um, Xbox's jumps. So there's a lot of... Uh, there's something that a lot of uh, runners, not runners, but casual players don't realize, too, that the water is actually electrified in this fight. So standing in the water will cause you to do some water. And for those who like, play the game for the first time, uh, kind of judge the fight based on their first encounter with bots, and in the first encounter, the ladder is a lot higher, the ceiling's a lot higher than it is here, so you're you're not in danger of getting hit by bots when he jumps, but in this fight in particular, his jumps are a little bit higher, it's either that or the ceiling is lower, and you will actually get hit by bots if he jumps up towards you. I think it's a mixture of both. They also, for some reason, they decided to hide the ladder in the room. <laughs> First time you're fighting, you don't even realize there's a ladder in the ceiling. Until oh you... my god, I got a space jump to kill this guy? <laughs> Until you do like a random power bump out of the space. Seems to me like there's been a noticeable pattern with Hubert of not doing so great at the start of the fight, but picking it up towards the end. It almost seems like he's kind of relearning the fight as he goes on. Yeah, I mean, this fight... I don't remember I was learning this fight. A lot of it was just kind of like trial and error whenever I was first trying to do it. And now I get to see that the... Um, the refill after bosses isn't actually a full refill. That's correct. 
it's like, uh, I don't know, like, it feels like, okay, so, I know I've had less E tanks than Hubert has, and, like, a lot less, like, two or three less, and it didn't refill everything. So I think it's, like, a certain percentage after, like, a certain point, it just has, like, a certain percentage of your health or something. Ooh. Hubert's deciding to be a little bit risky here and skip Ooh. and save. Really? <laughs> What if he dies during the escape sequence then? from the restricted laboratory? I think he'll be fine. He only but has a minute. It's fine. The, the timer for this escape is kind of ridiculous. Even though getting up here is, is, is not trivial, Metroids are really annoying. Yeah, I think Nintendo expected them to struggle with the Metroids more than what you actually usually do. That and you have the risk of dying right after in Sector 1. I mean, especially if you're not uh, comfortable with like re-spinning after you hit the metroid you, you're like not spinning anymore and you have to start spinning again in order to space jump and i can see a casual player struggling to get up there <laughs> you know? right so for like, like i would imagine that the uh, casual player if they got hit by the metroid while space jumping and got knocked out of space jump would land right back to the bottom probably uh, whenever you're not in the, the space jump animation, you can actually reactivate it by just pressing jump again. And there's something I've always wondered for... Um, I'm not really sure, do the ice missiles tink on the Metroids? Has anyone ever tried hitting it? Uh, I'm not sure. I think they do. I would assume that everything tinks on the Metroids. Because it's kind of interesting uh, how Metroids are weak against ice, but we are able to <laughs> tink ice missiles. They might just go through them, they might like not get hit at all. So it looks like uh, Hubert's approaching lately, and correct me if I'm wrong, the audio is on Hubert's uh, stream. So if you're a headphone user, you may want to bring the volume down. <laughs> yeah, he's um, heading towards definitely the loudest fight in the game. It's... I want to say it's close, but not as obnoxious as the intro screen to Zero Mission. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would definitely say it's more obnoxious than the Zero Mission. But I, I see your point. No beams. That's a good start. Yep. And I'm expecting Hubert's probably just going to go safe, and I, he might throw a few missiles in there, but I think he's mostly going to be safe and use the beam for the majority of the fight. Ideally, you'll want to like shoot a charge shot followed by a missile really quickly, then another charge shot and repeat, but you can mess up even worse if you're not familiar with that strat. Like we mentioned before, that uh, the missiles get a longer cooldown as, as they operate. Every weapon operates on the same cooldown, so if you shoot any weapon, you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can shoot anything again. Uh, but during this cooldown period, you can still charge your beam. And the charge beam has the lowest cooldown period out of all the weapons with only 3 frames. So, shooting a missile in between charge beams is a really efficient way to kill them. You only lose out on like a couple of frames of charge time if you get a missile in there. So, almost three. 
I've heard an argument about this uh, a while ago. Maybe he can help me clarify. Um, some people argue against using missiles in between wave beam for Ridley specifically because it creates lag uh, and might like slow you down because of that. I I don't know like I don't know if that's actually a thing or not. I guess that's sort of reasonable. Ridley is a pretty laggy fight in general, and ice the ice effect doesn't really help. Uh, I've never really looked into it because all my when I did any timing at all, we were just running for in-game time. Yeah, that's another important part about that. That probably would that would mainly be an RTA problem, not a in-game time problem. Right. It's also the question of uh, if shooting missiles in the pink shard team do anything, because they need to do more. Like, all the missiles you shoot to the fight need to do more than one charge of damage in order to, like, help with the fight. Right, in order to get and, some kind of uh, tangible result. And sadly enough, that's not even that likely, <laughs> because <laughs> charge does so much more damage than missiles. Like even shooting, yeah, I think if you shoot a missile between every charge beam, you, you save one charge beam. I would say it's definitely worth it then. It and uh, like Hubert... <laughs> <turn. laughs> Almost... Uh, Ray the common mistake runners will do when learning this game is if they haven't memorize the route too well, they'll go right instead of left after they climb on top of that shaft. You'll eventually get to where you're supposed to go, but it's a lot slower. I guess he decided to take the scenic route. <laughs> I'm assuming he probably doesn't know about the other route yet, is what I'm guessing. It's either he doesn't know about it or he forgot about it. Both, I could see both happening. I mean, he's been following the speedrun routes well so far, so it would be weird for him to not know about this one fork in the road, you know, but it's possible. And I have to sit through this long cutscene again. We've seen it four too many times. So it looks like we're approaching about the last five minutes, uh, more or less, of the game. Um, got two more bosses to fight. We have the SAX and the Omega. And hopefully Hubert is able to uh, finish and not die in the Fozzy fashion. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting Hubert to do a safety save right before the SAX anyway. Because SAX is like, actually a pretty scary fight and Hubert has been get, getting safety saves before pretty much every boss so far. So even if you do, even if a death happens, it shouldn't be that much time, really. I will have to give props to Hubert though, just like uh, Eagle said in the chat here, uh, joins the tournament um, because we needed the 30 second man uh, he learns the fight in a day. I mean, learn, learn the whole run in a day and ends up beating the first seed. So a, a lot of accomplishments here uh, for Hubert. And I think his rise to fame is only beginning. Future, everyone will know this tournament as the Rise of Uber. <laughs> I 
Okay, I, I don't think Hubert is aware of the um, screw attack blocks that will get you across quickly. And uh, an encouraging message by Exodo. <laughs> All right, looks like he's taking the safety save here, just to make sure he completes the run. So while we're um, at this fight, I don't think we mentioned mechanics for this fight. Uh, SAX takes a lot more damage when SAX is frozen because uh, it's not able to get its invulnerability frames uh, when it is actually frozen. So the quick way to kill SAX would be in kind of sort of the same way you would kill Ridley uh, using the diagonal missile going diagonally across SAX's hitbox while SAX is frozen though. Um, so an optimal fight would be a 4 beam shot at SAX to uh, kill it. But it looks like Huber went for the, the safe method of shooting a charge beam and then jumping or moving. Uh, SAX tends to react to getting shot by screw attacking, so it's really, really easy to predict. Getting the beast guys is really tight though, you need to... Uh, after facing with the ice missile, you need to be really precise on when you let it go to try to, try to hit it before it unfreezes. You, unfreeze it. you right. don't have a lot of time. Right, it, it almost feels like you have to shoot immediately, and because of that, some some runners might actually uh, release it too early and not shoot a charge at all. <laughs> yeah. Or um, sometimes they like the worst case scenario is you missing or not shooting early enough and causing SAX to break out of the ice and move around. Okay, so now Hubert is going to fight the final boss. Some difficulty uh, going down the elevator there. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. <laughs> The elevators are, can feel extremely finicky in this game. The hitbox we're getting down is definitely smaller than it looks. Yeah. So it looks like Hubert has enough health to survive accidentally running into Omega this time. A couple times. <laughs> so I don't expect him to die. Never know. He, he yeah. could die in the actual fight. Claw does like 100 damage. Yeah, the fight can actually very easily go against your way, especially because, like, for one, the, like, Dragon Punch and Santa Claw can do 100 damage, but you can also get double spike. So that's 200 damage right there. So if you're not careful, it's very easy to lose all of your health very quickly. I mean, he's not likely to do a volley, but he could still die. <laughs> like, he doesn't even take damage? Wow. And we've had a lot of deaths to Omega in the tournament. Right? It's been like four. Uh, I only know of two so far. I thought like at least... It's been like Fox Master? I guess someone else died to Omega. I can't remember who it was. Oh no. Oh, that was kinda... Ah. Please. <laughs> okay, he's good. <laughs> See, he's like, just quite some scary dog, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> Hubert went toe to toe with Omega, not even dodging a single swipe. Lived to tell the tale, <laughs> as opposed to a couple of other party <laughs> 
145. Okay, I think I'm gonna move Fozzie in here. Uh, he's apparently the only one who's still online, so... Other than Hubert, so I guess we're gonna be interviewing Fozzie and Hubert. So Fozzie, how'd you feel about your race? Well, some stuff went well. Like uh, I was ahead at some point, which uh, I was proud of because I usually like am not ahead much. Uh, some stuff went really bad, but the thing is, I haven't played the game in a while, and I didn't really practice very much for this uh, tournament. So uh, because of that, uh, it didn't go so well. But then again, I was against Eagle, who's like really good at the game, so my chances weren't very high like, from the start. Oh, the classic option select. I don't even play this game, and my opponent is better than me. <laughs> but other than that, um, well, I, I had fun, oh. at least. And, Hello. Um, it, it, was, it was enjoyable. Okay, so um, next one, talk to Exodo. Um, congratulations, man. Thanks. <laughs> You defeat Hubert pretty handily. How do you feel about that? Excuse me, I did on the hell yeah. Oh, I was saying you defeat Hubert pretty handily. How do you feel about that? Just one second, I have the, <laughs> the stream that is. Uh, okay, now I really hear you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, I was asking, how do you feel about the fact you beat Hubert? Oh, well, he didn't use his magic powers. <laughs> That's all. It was close. <laughs> yeah. That Omega fight was. Thought, scary. Uh, he was using his power when I wa when I got frozen uh, by the SAX in Sector Six. Oh. Hubert, you say you say you will not use your powers. But I didn't. <laughs> Besides that, it, this was a cool run and a nice race. Yeah. <laughs> kind of got we kind of got a little bit scared during that Omega fight at the end. We, yeah, me too. We were having flashbacks to Hubert versus JRP. <laughs> I can imagine. Yes, yeah, usually this do not happen, but uh, still, this went okay. So I didn't die. That's uh, that's the main point. Okay, so I'm um, continuing the train on Eagle. Congratulations again on your win. How do you feel about it? Uh, well, I'm just happy I got to play for once. <laughs> it, it's, um, I've been trying to schedule my matches for a little while, and we finally had to DQ my round one opponent after a bit because he was simply too busy to be able to play. Um, so it was nice actually getting a match in before, um, before we get to the, the, the third round, and, um, Fuzzy almost didn't show up here. <laughs> we, we, we were worried he wouldn't uh, show up here at the beginning, but he did, like promised, so it was all good. I was actually there, I was just um, kind of busy real quick. Yeah, that's all right. He's just making his way. Yeah. So uh, to continue the questioning, um, Eagle, I was going to ask, your next opponent will be the winner of Mandatobi versus Rasu. How are you going to prepare for that match, especially if you end up getting Rasu? Uh, I think I'm mostly good, honestly. Uh, me and Ross have been racing uh, sort of casually on and off for a bit, and I haven't lost yet, so it'd be quite a, quite an upset if he managed to beat me. But I mean, I'm being super confident now, and that might, you I mean, know, there, hit me in the head once he actually there gets a been, race. There have been bigger upsets already. So. <laughs> It could happen. Um, it could either happen. way, I'm not. I'm not too worried. I think I'll. Like, I haven't really had a super bad run yet. This this run I did just now certainly had its uh, awkward moments. But even then, like, I I don't think I ever like play super bad. So I mean, Ross can do it if he gets like a super good run going, and I'm get a similar run to this. I think, but I feel pretty confident. Okay. So, uh, I guess the next question to ask is for our other winner, Exodo. 
You're going to be fighting Paul's more next. What are you going to be doing to prepare for your match? Well, uh, fighting Paul's Paul more will be... This will be tough. Uh, honestly, I don't think uh, I will win. But uh, who knows, I will keep practicing and maybe with a good luck and a very good run uh, I can, uh, can handle this, but uh, I'm not very confident, at least not uh, as eager is. <laughs> it's fusion though, I don't think it happened. Yeah, I definitely would not discount the risk of Paul's more dying to Nightmare or something. You may die, but I, I'm, I'm uh, likely to die too, so... For, for all the we'll viewers out there, Paulsmore has a track record of either dying to certain bosses or uh, soft-locking at, at different points of the game, <laughs> so his, his consistency is not there, and there, there's definitely a chance um, Exodo may win uh, because of that fact. So I think that it may it would be a good race to watch, uh, simply because anything, literally anything, can happen uh, between the two. Yeah, in any case, this would be an interesting uh, race, I think. And while if I win, I will face Erk, and then Eagle, and then the winner of losers brackets, and I will win the tournament. You're making a lot of assumptions in Eagle's part of the bracket. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens uh, in Eagle's <laughs> next race. I will see. So uh, I haven't asked Hubert anything yet. Um, Hubert, your next match will be whoever wins between Abortion, Sark, and X-Dragon. Oh so boy. I guess I should go ahead and ask the obligatory question. What are you going to do prayer for your next match? Nothing. <laughs> this game is <laughs> like a true champion. <laughs> well, know, honestly. Um, <laughs> well, obviously you on PB, so that's a good start. It's my second run. I don't know what else I was expecting. So, I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, again, thanks to all of our runners for showing up tonight, for today. You guys all did a great job in your races. Again, congratulations to Eagle and Exodo for winning your matches. Wish you guys good luck in the next round. And uh, I guess I'll pass off to Fiesel to, to tell us what's next in Speed Gaming. Okay, well, uh, we got nothing for the next two hours, and then it's going to be Metroid Prime at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's just under two hours from now. That's going to be Jack879 versus DCR Gamer. So we'll see you guys back here then. You definitely follow that Jack879 guy. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, honestly. <laughs>